Good morning, everybody. Uh, we're just going to take a couple minutes to go over the directions for your designing a new cover for the Devil's Arithmetic. This is part of your packet, so this was in your packet, but I'm going to go over all the directions with you and give you a couple of options on, you know, how you want to do this and the best way to do it. So, first of all, I mean, this is the cover for the Devil's Arithmetic. I like it. It's very subdued. It's kind of understated. It's a nice cover. I don't know if it would make you want to pick it up and read it, um, but I like the idea behind it. Um, you're going to create your own cover. And so let's go through some of those directions. I got my paper. The first thing is you have to obviously include the title, The Devil's Arithmetic. It needs to be spelled correctly. So make sure that you put your apostrophe for devils and make sure you spell arithmetic correctly, capital letters everything like that. You also have to include the name of the author. So that's Jane Yolen. Um, however you want to put that, wherever you want to put that, but that's important. Again, it has to be spelled correctly because those are like the little details that would cause you to lose points on, you know, a somewhat uh, easy assignment. It has to be related to the novel. Now, I think there's a lot of different ways that you can go with that, but you have to be careful also. So, any, um, anything that you felt was significant within the novel. Like, for example, in the beginning, they talked a lot about the Seder meal, which we didn't get to do. We were going to do our Seder meal, but that's okay. Um, so you could maybe include different references to the Seder meal or the prophet Elijah, the Old Testament, um, different things like that. And then certainly you get into the concentration camp, the you know Nazi Germany and all that. But that's where you have to be a little bit careful. Stop, Jasper. You don't want to put anything that would be, you know, an offensive symbol, like, for example, the swastika or things like that. A picture of Hitler. Like, that That would not be on the cover of a book, okay? So use your common sense. Use your best judgment. If you feel like, oh, I, I, I'm not sure if this is right, then it's probably not. So maybe just go without that. Um, but everything else that you feel like is related to the novel even subtle things like sometimes they talked about the, the the swallows in the sky or you know you could have like the smokestack in the background um the barracks you know the barbed wire those would be good things that would help to kind of convey that part of the novel does have to have color now if you are somebody who really likes to do the pencil drawings and pencil sketching that's okay that's still a color but make sure that it's significant and it's done well and it's done purposefully, okay? So if you're doing like a pencil sketch or a pencil drawing or just Sharpie to make it look really like clean and crisp and clear, that's okay. But it obviously has to show, you know, a lot of effort and that it was done on purpose for a reason to add to your cover, okay? Um, you don't have to have a picture though. If you're not really good at that part of it, you don't have to draw a picture. Um, you know, you could just use a lot of like strong, bold color or um, design or something that looks kind of harsh um, that would maybe go along with the theme of our novel. It does have to be a full sheet of paper. So if you're using, you know, this size sheet of paper, you do need to cover, so Jasper, you do need to cover the whole thing, okay? Now, so plan wisely, make your, your title should be big, you know, it should be an obvious part of your of your drawing um, so that it's kind of taking up some space. You might want to have a nice border around the edges too, like some books have. The other option that you have is, you know, you can do it all on the computer. If you don't want to draw anything, you know, you can, you could just insert pictures from online, you know, you can just do everything with different script, different fonts, different whatever. You can do everything just through digitally and then you could just send it to me that way. Or you can, you know, get a piece of paper and you can turn it in next week during the turn in day. Whatever works best for you. Okay, guys. The other thing I want to make sure that I go over with you is um, this book, this Devil's Arithmetic book, those of you that were lucky enough to get a book, um, needs to be returned. So when you do your next turn in day next Monday, um, make sure that you get this book returned. If you cannot do the turn in days or you haven't been able to do the turn in days, just email me. We'll find a way to get it. It's not a problem. But if you're going to be going to school anyway, 
um, then please just drop off your cover, your copy of The Devil's Arithmetic. Um, some of you might also need lockers to be finished cleaning out, so we'll have to figure out a time and a day to do that too. So this is our last week in The Devil's Arithmetic. Next week you're gonna be in your literature books. So if you don't have a literature book, let me know, because I can, I can easily get one to you, not a problem. Okay, if you have any specific questions or you just kind of want me to check your progress, just take pictures and send them to me. Uh, you can even do that through the Remind app, guys, if you want to do that. So whatever works best for you. And I'm really um, anxious to see them. I, I like to see your creativity. So have a great day and uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks. Bye-bye.